Hey folks, uh, welcome. We're going to do the uh, Aperio, Open Aperio 2015 State of the Portal. Uh, I uh, hope you're all in the right room. I know I am because I'm mic'd and clearly there's a lot going on. Uh, all right, so uh, this is our State of the Portal presentation. We've had one uh, ever since I can remember. I've been to clearly a lot of these uh, conferences. Uh, <clears throat> and I'm happy to um, represent the project today and uh, be a part of delivering this. I'm, I'm not alone. I, I will be joined by a, a couple more familiar faces before this is over. All right, uh, we actually, we have a lot of slides uh, and uh, we already lost a couple minutes getting started, uh, getting set up, so I am going to jump right in. Uh, we are going to talk about, basically, what we're going to talk about breaks down to basically three things. What just happened, uh, what's happening now, and, and what's happening after that, uh, what we think is happening after that. You, uh, you know, a couple years from now, you can... Uh, haul us in and, and take us to task for being so wrong, but at least we're going to try to describe to you uh, what we think is happening after that, our best understanding. All right, so uh, the, what recently happened or, or what's happened most recently, uPortal 4.2. Uh, uPortal 4.2, our latest minor release, was released in April of this year, uh, just a few weeks ago. I've posted some links for full release notes and uh, the release page in GitHub. Uh, you can see also the tag for the release. It's a new minor version. It includes uh, new features, many of them, and they're exciting. I actually am a huge fan of, uh, uh, of several of the new features in 4.2, and actually they, uh, a lot of them scratch an itch. A lot of them actually deal with pain points that I've experienced for a long time uh, with uPortal, and actually this is one of those, uh, Hover Chrome. Uh, these days, in 4.2, if you publish a portlet and you say, I want no portlet Chrome on this portlet, you get the experience you want. You get, uh, you know, no box around it. You get the visual experience you want, but you no longer have to deal with the fact that you can't do anything with it on the page, uh, which was our, our previous experience. So a portlet with no Chrome uh, now res automatically, uh, you know, by virtue of Responder, receives uh, what we call Hover Chrome, and here I've got a visual I hope everybody uh, can see. Uh, Hover Chrome gives you access to the same, it, it, it even looks like the regular Chrome. It gives you access to the same uh, kinds of functions and things you might do with the portlet Chrome. It actually also acts as the drag handle. So you can, uh, a portlet that has no Chrome, you can still move around in the layout. Uh, and that's fantastic. Uh, we greatly updated the portlet manager UI. We made it quite a bit simpler excuse me, uh, quite a bit simpler. We uh, consolidated several pages into one. Uh, the, this effort uh, ties in with our broader effort, efforts to make uh, the administrative interfaces more approachable to more people, not just the priesthood, not just the uh, three or four people who manage the portal project. I've got a screenshot of that. Uh, it is bootstrappy, it's uh, modern and elegant, and it is simplified and consolidated. All the power is still there. It, uh, you can access the advanced options and tweak the seldom changed uh, configuration elements, but they're all still there. Uh, that doesn't look like I thought it would. All right, uh, I'm missing an image somehow. Uh, there is a new session timeout uh, dialog uh, that's a part of 4.2. If, uh, you know, based on the configured session duration in Tomcat, Automatically, when uh, the session is about to expire, a dialog, uh, a modal dialog pops up and prompts the user, and if the user does not respond, the user gets logged out automatically. It works something like your bank. We have a six-column layout option, uh, thanks to Illini Cloud, who have been fantastic contributors over the last several quarters. Uh, previously, our, our, the, our greatest number of columns was four, uh, most portlets, traditional portlets, don't look very hot in a six-column layout option, but uh, app launchers really, really do. So if you're using a lot of app launchers, if you have a page primarily constructed of app launcher-style portlets, uh, this six-column layout option looks amazing, uh, particularly with no Chrome. It looks very much like a mobile dashboard. 
we have implemented a number of slick uh, Portlet Marketplace uh, UI uh, enhancements. We have, uh, you know, added bootstrap styling to it. We've added uh, more color and interest, more graphics. Here is a screen capture of the, the list screen, the first screen in the marketplace. Here is a screen capture of the detail screen for a portlet in the marketplace. We've also added the ability to add a portlet to your layout from within the marketplace, a, a, a capability that was not present originally. Uh, there are other, you know, there's more coolness than I have broken out into indiv individual slides for you, Portal uh, 4.2. Uh, I should have put this one in orange or a massive star next to it. Uh, transient layout mode support for unauthenticated GIST users. Okay, it's a mouthful but it's very meaningful to me. Uh, unauthenticated users in uh, uPortal from time immemorial have only been able to access content that's in their layout, occupying a slot in, in essentially the tab column hierarchy uh, of the portal. And that was, um, you know, it didn't come up every day, doesn't come up at all for some people who, who require authentication to see the portal, uh, to see the first pixel of the portal. But it is uh, a, a sore spot that comes up every now and again, uh, and a point of frustration. Uh, that point of frustration has been eliminated, thanks to James. Uh, we can have, uh, we can view portlets while un unauthenticated, while we're a guest, that are not a part of our layout. Uh, let's see, uh, many improvements to multi-tenancy. They're, they're mostly subtle and too many to, um, to list. ePortal 4.1 was the first version that supported multi-tenancy, and I think we'll be going through this for a while, uh, just kind of picking off the low-hanging fruit and improving those features. Uh, we added support for the tin can API. That was something that was begun quite a while ago, but wrapped up, uh, you know, kind of rapidly uh, recently for 4.2. Uh, thanks to KU, we added the uh, maintenance portlet lifecycle state. Uh, you, can, you can disable a portlet and provide a message right there in the layout that says it's out, out of service but will return. A total of 112 JIRA tickets resolved of various sorts. Uh, some are bugs, some are new features, some are improvements. Uh, all right, uh, I want to call your attention, well, I have your attention, to a couple of configuration changes. There are, these are probably the top two things that you might pay attention to, uh, keep your eye on as you move from something before uPortal 4.2 to uPortal 4.2. Uh, the default PAGS implementation has changed. We've switched to the database-backed uh, PAGS implementation. That sets us up nicely for things that are already happening uh, to build UIs to manage uh, PAGS groups. Uh, you know, we don't, there aren't really any of those in 4.2, but those are in process now. That's part of the next talk. Uh, and the, uh, the browse permission has uh, sort of uh, fulfilled its destiny. The new browse permission, which was introduced uh, sometime in uPortal 4, I want to say, introduced with the market, original marketplace work has uh, sort of come full circle and fulfilled its destiny. Browse permission is now the thing that controls whether a portlet is visible in the customize area or in search. Uh, it, it no longer is dependent on whether the portlet is, has been added to a category or not. That was a, um, a workaround that we had. Uh, that was uh, you know, a, a hidden trick uh, that we employed, not adding a portlet to a category. Uh, historically, that would keep that out of the uh, customized gallery or out of the search, but now we have uh, a real permission for that. All right, so that covers uh, the recent history. It's very exciting. Uh, you know, I'm, I feel as though perhaps no one is more excited than I am about uPortal 4.2. I think it's very slick. Uh, all right, what is happening now? Uh, yeah, I'm going to be joined. I think I've got a couple more parts, but going to be joined. Yes. Okay. Um, so, so in the topic of what's happening right now, uh, right now the University of Wisconsin Madison has built this exciting new alternative supplemental additional front end. I too am excited about uPortal 4.2 because, in fact, this front end well it works with uPortal 4.2. And so, uh, what you see here is an alternative landing page, you know, maybe a little snappier, also responsive. 
uh, to, to provide, hey, it's a view on those very same favorites that you uh, had other UIs to, to get at in the, uh, in the product. Um, we are uh, working with new and exciting ways to put little snippets of dynamic content on that landing page. Again, going after kind of mobile first, fast, responsive, snappy, uh, you know, getting that, that quick hit of content. Um, uh, and, and we're still using portlets. What happens when you launch that more payroll information is you go to the genuine HRS payroll portlet. This is a, a supplemental front end, works with your uPortal 4.2 to provide an additional option for how to serve your users. Uh, happening right now up in GitHub. You can grab the code and play with it. We've been excited this conference talking with people. Hey, how about that marketplace, that directory of apps, the very same directory of apps, the very same metadata that you're managing in the new and improved Portlet Management UI. Thank you, Drew. Um, another manifestation, another way to give your users access to be excited about that content is through a new optional alternative UI for that directory of apps implemented in AngularJS. Uh, we're quite proud of it. We're getting positive feedback on it. Uh, I think we're going to kick some butt. Um, this becomes the default MyUW on August 11th, so going full tilt. Uh, and then we've been experimenting with building out, uh, yes, portlets are good. Yes, we have portlets. Yes, we, we need to keep delivering the portlets that we have, but we are eager to, to discover new ways to develop applications to deliver through the portal and to discover how to effectively collaborate and share in these new ways, building things with, with say, AngularJS. We've got code for this. That code is in production at UW-Madison. Uh, and, and it's up on GitHub, and you can grab it. And, and I, for one, am very excited about it. That's what's happening right now with us. All right. I have a couple things, at least one, uh, to report in terms of what's happening now as well. Uh, is Benito in the room? Benito is, uh, is oh, yes, yeah, uh, excellent. Timing, excellent. Uh, so Benito, you can give him, give him a hug because he is um, working hard to bring you um, this feature, a new feature for PAGs, that so far the name we have is Ad Hoc Groups. We are open to other names. Uh, we're sort of thinking through this, but this is a new feature of PAGs that allows you on the fly, and this will be available in the UI, not something that you have to do in database or config, not requiring a restart, not requiring import-export, not requiring even uh, portal administrator access, on the fly you'll be able to create a new group in the portal that is based on, where your membership in that new group is, ba is, is relative to your membership in other groups. So you can say, I really need to publish this portlet, and I need the people who have access to this portlet, I really need that to be uh, faculty members who are teaching out of this building. And these are two different groups. I already have these groups in my portal. I, you know, I have the faculty group, and I have a group for this building, people who have their offices in that building, or people who teach out of that building. Or maybe it's a campus. Uh, but I'm, I'm publishing this portlet, and I need to make sure that the only people who have access to this portlet satisfy both these group memberships. Uh, you know, since the history, throughout the history of uPortal, there has not been a way to do that. Uh, not with anything, not with uh, publishing portlets, not with DLM fragments, not with uh, other permissions. And we are introducing uh, that now. That's what this feature is about. The first place that it will show up is in the, um, is in the group selector. So actually, uh, the portlet manager and anything that uses a group selector for uh, selecting, yeah, for like selecting groups. If you're using the group selector for something else, let me know. But uh, anything that uses a group selector for selecting groups will give you an option to create on the fly one of these ad hoc groups or one of these new groups that uh, you know, evaluates your, your membership synthetically based on your relationship to other groups. You also have the ability to say, I want a, I want a group of all faculty members who are not a part of this campus. You know, it's, it's a yes or no, uh, member of or not member of. All right, a very exciting feature happening now. Uh, should hit the, uh, uh, the master branch quite soon. 
Uh, all right. Uh, yes, as a matter of fact, it's already in a pull request. It's not, uh, please no one hit the green button. I don't think it's entirely complete. We're still working on it, but it is, uh, it's very soon. Uh, all right, this is a, um, this is not a new uh, image. This is not a new graphic. This is something that was prepared by uh, a, a, Unicon, a former Unicon employee named Peter Hart uh, some years ago. Uh, and, and promptly shelved, uh, promptly put on the back burner. I don't know that it will look like this, but, we, but I do know that a, a management tool for fragments, uh, DLM fragments, has uh, surfaced again as a priority and is likely, uh, very likely uh, to happen, uh, very likely to see work uh, in the near term. This would be a tool where you can define new DLM fragments where you can manage DLM fragments, like maybe change their audience or priority or change their name or something like that, uh, right in the portal through an administrative UI, and it would make the appropriate database changes. Uh, of course, we've always been able to adjust the content on fragments using uh, you know, the DLM, the current DLM fragment manager. Uh, but yes, this is another hot item. Ah, and with that, I give you uh, Dave. All right. All right, so my name is Dave. I'm uh, with Oakland University, and I'm going to talk uh, quickly about what well, we call them U Mobile native apps. But I think we're going to start changing the name. And what they really are is just a way to put U Portal on mobile devices. So we have what, are, what we'd like to call different flavors of U Portal. On, and you can put it on your phone in any different way. You can use the mobile web. And that can go from Responder or M Universality if you're using an older version of ViewPortal, or if you're still using an older version of what was called U-Mobile, you can go with Titanium. Uh, PhoneGap actually went ahead and replaced Titanium. There was a big talk about that. And then what we did at Oakland is that we decided to go full on native, and we wrote Objective-C for iOS, and then we wrote in Java for Android. So all of these options are out there right now, and they're available for you if you want to put uPortal on a mobile device. So these are just a couple quick examples. The one over on the left is our latest uh, Android development. Um, the one in the middle is an iPhone, and the one on the right was the PhoneGap implementation that we took. Uh, as you can see, they're all very similar. The UI is matched up with basically how the operating system looks. So with PhoneGap, no matter what phone you're on, iPhone, Android, even a Windows phone, if you have users that use Windows phones, uh, it'll look like that. But the way we wanted it is that we wanted to interact how a normal person would look at their cell phone. So if you are a normal Android user, you know where the menu is. And if you're an iPhone user, you know where the menu is, and, and so on. So we wanted to keep things consistent. And so no one has to learn how to use a new app. It's very intuitive for the user. They can just pull up their phone and go, oh, this is the button that I know that I have to click on. So just a quick example, you take uPortal and you shove it with all these fantastic devices and then you get hopefully an easy result. So to talk about the easiness of it, it's all done with JSON and API calls to uPortal. And we set it up pretty, pretty easily so where you just go into the source code, you don't have to do any configuration. You put the URLs of your uPortal um, and then you take cast and then you shove it in there and these are all just in a constants file. And done. You have an app. And it's really, really that easy. And I, I know because I see a lot of faces around here, and I know what universities you go to, and I've tested to make sure that it works. Um, we're hoping to get uh, Shibboleth implementation done soon. As we move over there, we'll have to figure out how to incorporate that. So people that are on Shib, I know, Wisconsin, but don't worry. You guys will have support soon enough. Uh, so yeah, once that's done, you just deploy the app and, and you're good to go. I mean, there's some skinning involved if you want to change colors and whatnot, um, you know, to match your institution's colors. But for the most part, it's just putting in a hex value and you're good to go. So if you're interested in getting involved with mobile apps, uh, you know, you contact me or you know, come talk to me after this. But we have a wiki that you guys can go to. We have uh, the UMobile homepage on the Aperio website. And we have a, a U-Mobile mailing list that you guys can talk, and we can answer any questions that you guys have. And if you're interested in the source code and just want to play around with it, uh, everything's up on GitHub as well. And then with that, I will pass it off to Andrew Petro.
All right, so we had what just happened, we had what's happening right now, and now we have uh, what's happening next. So we had a couple of birds of a feather at this very conference um, talking about uh, uPortal vision, vision for the project and vision for the product, you know, where to go next, what, what are our, anyway, the kinds of things we talked about uh, are, are steps to make uPortal more like a product, to make it more adoptable, to make it easier to keep up with upgrades, uh, to decouple the underlying implementation, um, you know, going after some, some perhaps more modern architectures. Uh, I think there's a lot of consensus around uh, some, some value, some, some major return on investment to be realized from focusing on JSON web services that can then be consumed in a variety of ways. They can be consumed in a rich JavaScript front end. They can be consumed in a traditional portlet. They can be consumed in those native apps. Uh, we can get a really a lot of goodness out of uh, agreeing on and developing some quality JSON APIs, building upon the quality JSON APIs that, by the way, we've already got, the kind of APIs that you point your U mobile app at that, that Dave just talked about. Um, so I think that was, was a good thing that continued to happen at this conference. Um, so really, what is the state of the uPortal project? In some sense, the state is the state that it has always been in the 15-year history of the project, which is to say that we have a code base that provides present value that you can implement or upgrade today to provide uh, user experiences and discoverability and navigability and, and service delivery on your campuses right now, and that we will continue to collaborate to evolve that product and evolve the project to do that even better going forward. Um, we've had a uPortal project for a long time now, and the underlying technologies have changed as the world moves. We, we had channels back in the good old days, and we've had uh, portlets and native apps and the responsive design that the kinds of things in this presentation pitched as what's happening right now. Um, and we'll have more things for the, for the next 15 years. With that, I think we can have Where's the clock? A little time, I guess, for questions. I could look at my watch. We were speedy. We got a little bit of time for questions uh, and discussion. But of course, the very best place in the world to talk about the uPortal project is in the uPortal project. We have these lovely email lists. Uh, we have a list for discussing, you know, implementing the product and the features of the product. That'd be uPortal user. We have a list for discussing developing the product. That's uPortal dev. These are good lists. I would love for them to be 10 times as noisy as they are today. How much time do we have for questions, Drew? I think we have 15 minutes, two minutes. Oh, wow. Like to to Tim Levitt would like to mention that we have IRC chat. I would not like to mention that we have IRC chat, which is why it's not on this page. Um, but yes, there's IRC chat, and, and fortunately, the Tims hang out there, and that's really who you want your answers from anyway. So yes, IRC, IRC chat, very valuable. You can be there if you want to. Those lights are really bright. They are. Drew, what do you want to talk about? Whatever I'm That'd be good, too, yeah. I thought you were going to come up here and extemporize. Yeah, help out. I, we've entered the... We've entered the question phase, so I thought I'd bring myself closer and, and be more prepared uh, to answer questions. Uh, and, and as long as I'm here, I'll mention that there are more than, uh, even people whose name are not uh, Tim are welcome in the IRC chat. Uh, there are a number of Uniconners, including my, myself, who hang out there reasonably regularly. I just wouldn't know, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, since the questions aren't popping, it's, it's time for statements. So, uh, um, I'll make a statement. We were just chat. You know, we had some really good boffs. Uh, I think all of you guys and gals were there. And, uh, you know, I love the conversation, but we need to have, you know, more conversations, not just have those kind of conversations um, and do that kind of high-level thinking. 
uh, once a year or so at the conference. And one of the things that um, uh, a couple of us were chatting about um, just uh, moments before were that I think there's an opportunity for um, the U Portal Steering Committee to play a more active role in fostering the communication and the collaboration and the direction setting um, and making sure that this project continues to be healthier and even more successful than it is today. So you saw you know, what's coming next in the code and the technology. And I think that what, you're, uh, what I'd like to see coming next in the U from the U-Portal Steering Committee is more activity and, um, and energy uh, that helps all of you developers and implementers and um, users of U-Portal have more success and be able to do your jobs even better. So, um, and since I am the chair of the U-Portal Steering Committee, at the moment I can you know, help make that happen. Uh, so look forward um, or look out for ways to that you might be able to engage in that conversation, maybe engage, even engage in the U-Portal uh, Steering Committee, and maybe even uh, take on a leadership role uh, in the community, like in the, on the U-Portal Steering Committee. So, um, you, so the question is: Is there a spe is there a separate list for the U Portal Steering Committee? Um, there is, and uh, you know maybe. Uh, and so I think your question maybe was like, "Well, hey, I want to participate. I want to be on there." So, I think that what we might want to look at what the U Portal Steering Committee is and what it does. I think the one thing it doesn't do is steer. You know, it, it, it's almost like a misnomer. There's no steering done by that committee. Um, the steering is done, it, it was done uh, last hour. You know, we were talking as a community and trying to, you know, steer this thing collectively. That's how the steering gets done. The U Portal Steering Committee doesn't do any ste steering. So maybe we'll look at, you know, kind of rebooting that uh, to somehow. Um, and so exactly what the U-Portal Steering Committee does, what it's responsible for, I think we're going to see that evolve. Um, you know, we've, we've been, uh, a number of us, you know, Drew's been on that committee for uh, quite some time, and to, to the extent uh, what it's been doing for the last um, several years is uh, getting on a Google Hangout for an hour once a month and just kind of checking in on what's going on in, uh, with the project um, and maybe discussing about, hey, we should have a, a, a U-Portal community call. Let's get set up for that. Um, hey, we got we to gotta update these uh, 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 website pages. Somebody should pay some attention to that. Um, you know, we talk a little bit about uh, some of the processes and things around U-Portal. Um, it hasn't been, it's not real exciting talk. Um, and it's not always uh, the, the most productive. Um, so I think we can look at ways to improve that and, and that there can be some non-technical, there's not technical work that needs to be done to support the project. And uh, I think that that committee is looking at you know, trying to make sure um, that some of that work gets done. They don't do the work, but they try to help get it done. And if anybody has any ideas of how, you know, what kind of meta support can be given to this project and how that might be done, um, please let me know. Because we'll, you know, we're kind of looking at rebooting that coming up with a new version. It's going to be called the meta committee. The meta committee, right. But are there any questions?
So for posterity, um, what, what you shared is, uh, just make sure it gets on the recording, um, there, a desire uh, that not only you have, but I, others have as well, to really have a sense of um, where uPortal is being used around the world. And some other projects have a uh, way of visualizing that. We don't. Um, we've tried a variety of things. We've tried on uh, one of the previous websites a, a kind of a self-registration um, uh, piece on that website. Um, that got a little bit of activity, and then I think it just kind of petered out. Uh, we have a wiki page where people can list their implementation on that wiki page. I suspect if I go and if I took a look, there probably hasn't been a lot of activity on that uh, recently. Correct me if I'm wrong. Did we once, for a little while, have kind of a callback reporting thing? We have the register this portal portlet. Oh, we have the register this portal portlet. Um, but at one point we had thought, well, let's just put something in the code. Yeah, you launch uPortal, and it goes and pings something to let us know. But that just, um, and if we didn't do something like that, we maybe, there was a, some discussion about that, but that just sounded way too creepy. Um, and that just didn't seem to be our style. Uh, for my part, though, uh, I, I think that's actually a discussion that we could bring up every now and again and revisit uh, because the world changes under our feet and maybe it's less creepy in 2015 than we felt it was in uh, 2009. It, it's certainly exactly what Drupal does uh, for its modules, uh, and it's, they have a lot of statistics. <laughs> I, I don't think it would ever be something that you have no option to turn off. It would be something that you opt into. Probably you'd be prompted, actually. But, but yeah. Well, I, I, uh, I imagine it. We would have to engineer it as something that happens once and then and doesn't happen again. So for the recording, the, the statement was um, recognizing the value in um, you know, being more effective in, in articulating and communicating uh, the, the value proposition of the product. And, and, and from that, you know, perhaps you know, mission and vision that, you know, as you might expect, then drives you know, development priorities and is something that we, that we rally upon and, and that we use as a lens for considering you know, priorities in what we do, which all seems quite good. We could sing. No, I, I have to set up for the... Uh, yeah. I think it's just fine. Well, thank you very much, everyone. Uh, appreciate you coming, and, and we'll do it again next year. <laughs>